Welcome to this webinar on Open Detect filters. I will start with an introduction on what is free and what is commercially available, and then I will describe a number of uh, filters for different types of applications. I will follow up with a comparison of various filters, and I will finally wrap it up. Free filters are available in OpenDetect itself in the Attribute Engine. There's a whole range of different filters uh, available, from convolutional filters to uh, bandpass filters, uh, gap decon for multiple removals. Um, and you can of course build your own filters by chaining attributes, uh, and especially the volume statistics, reference and position attributes are popular in that uh, respect. There are a couple of uh, pre-stack filters, and mainly these are have to do with restacking the data, uh, creating angle stacks, super getters, that kind of work. Also in the volume builder, that is our processing uh, sequence, you have a few smoothing filters. The smoother is a three-dimensional filter, and the lateral smoother is uh, a two-dimensional smoother. But we also have a couple of uh, free plugins, uh, Colop, developed by Peter Sahuchi, available from the Wavelet Manager, and Wayne Mox uh, plugin. There's a very nice MLV uh, filter, which is like a structure oriented uh, smoothing filter. And structure orientation filtering, and also what we call dip steering, which is the same. I will come back to that uh, later on in this uh, webinar. The Wavelet Manager uh, I've highlighted because there is uh, probably uh, not very well known utility there, there where you can create matching filters. So you can convert one wavelet for, from one particular data set to another wavelet or a desired wavelet. And that matching filter can then be applied using the convolve attribute. Commercially, Various filters are available, either in OpenDetect Pro or in different uh, plugins. In the Attribute Engine, we have the dip uh, plugins, uh, related to the dip steering plugin, of course. The Volume Builder in a, uh, has a Pro Attribute filter, which is called uh, Recursive Gaussian Filtering, a smoothing filter. Very fast, it's uh, the fastest filter we probably have. And the Faults and Fractures, we have a very powerful edge preserved smoother which I will uh, show later. And in the machine learning uh, plugin, there are a range of trained models that can be applied for different types of application, removing random noise, removing special types of coherent noise, uh, removing multiples, that kind of work. And then in OpenDetect, we have uh, quite a few uh, wavelet shaping uh, slash frequency uh, type of uh, shaping tools but for a real professional application there is a set of attributes sorry set of plugins available by ArcGLS spectral bluing color inversion frequency frequency shaping which can really um, push the boundaries um, then there's a plugin from STMage for removing footprints that is called MGS destriping and we have our own fluid contact finder for highlighting hydrocarbon anomalies in 3D, we do that by stacking along the contours. And if we have 4D difference cubes, we can also highlight these by doing this on a local restricted area along the contours. Now let's look at uh, a few filters. And we start with random noise uh, suppression. And first of all, we're looking at dip steered filters. Dip steering is the process in which we are filtering along seismic uh, reflections. And this is also called structurally oriented filtering. In OpenDetect, we first compute a steering cube, and that is a volume with uh, two dips, an inline and a crossline dip at every seismic sample position. And this can be done for 3D, but also for 2D. In 2D, we only calculate the dip in the line direction. Now, what is the seismic dip? It's uh, a measurement expressed as delta T over delta X, and we basically uh, following or expressing how much the seismic event is dipping relative to the uh, position in the middle. 
Seismic dip is of course related uh, to geologic dip, but basically it's a smoothed composite of geologic dip, which is at a much finer scale, as you can see here in this comparison. In the dip steering uh, uh, application, which is often uh, expressed in the attribute engine as an optional parameter if you have the dip steering, um, dip steering plugin, we find uh, different uh, forms of uh, steering. If there's no steering, then obviously we're just extracting the information horizontally. And if we would be filtering based on this horizontal uh, extraction, then of course we are mixing different signals. Central steering means we are following the dip from the central position, that is the evaluation position. And also then we are making a mistake because we're not really following the seismic reflectors in three dimensions. In full steering, which is the default when we do dip steering, we're following the dip in three dimensions. And basically this is a kind of local horizon tracking just using the dip field. And now we are extracting information along the seismic reflectors and therefore we can apply filters in this uh, way. Here's an example. This is uh, an input. We see it's uh, pretty noisy and if we apply a dip steered median filter then we remove the noise. I'll toggle this a couple of times before, after, before, after. We can also suppress random noise with a machine learning model and this is an example of a trained model which is supplied with our machine learning uh, plugin and this model was trained by London uh, Geolab nowadays uh, AKPP. This is before and this is after. Before and after. And you can see that this filter does a really good job in removing the random noise. It also does a little bit more, it also ch changes the amplitude spectra. Now let's look at edge preserving filters. In OpenDetect we have uh, different dip steered filters and we have combined these using our attribute uh, engine as a chain of attributes into what we call a fault enhancement filter. So a fault enhancement, enhancement filter is a composite of a diffusion, dip steered diffusion filter and a dip steered median filter. Dip steered diffusion filter what it does is you're evaluating in a small radius around the evaluation point what is the best quality seismic. You do that by looking at the similarity attribute and then based on that you are moving the best quality seismic into the direction of the evaluation position. And <coughs> the dip steered median filter we have seen already, we're just outputting the median value. Now the composition here is that we are applying the dip steered median filter in areas of good quality and in areas of bad quality, that is near faults, we are applying the dip steered diffusion filters. So there's a cutoff defined by the user. On the left we see the input, on the right the fault enhanced filter and please notice the sharpened uh, fault positions, so sharpened edges. Now that of course has also an impact on attribute analysis. Just one example of what pre-processing of the data can do for attribute analysis. Here we have <coughs> an input data set. Similarity is computed on a horizon. And this is when we have first computed a fault enhancement filter. So we have enhanced the edges and then computed similarity. So this is without fault enhancement and this is with fault enhancement. However, there is an even better edge preserving filter and that is our edge preserved smoother, which is supported in OpenDetect's faults and fractures plugin. This filter is also a structurally oriented filter. It's applying a recursive Gaussian filter, but that recursive Gaussian filter is also weighting, weighted and the weights are coming from the thinned fault likelihood or the fault likelihood volume. So this is uh, a filter that was developed by Dave Hale. And we're now going to compare seismic, dip steered median filter and edge preserved smoothing filter. So this is my input seismic. 
noisy, cleaned up with a dip-steered median filter, sharpened with the edge preserved smoother, overlaying the thin fault likelihood and going back to the original seismic data. Next one on our list is frequency shaping and for this we're going to look at a number of plugins um, available through our partnership with ArcCLS. Seismic spectral bluing, seismic colored inversion and frequency shaping modify the seismic spectrum to match Wellock spectrum. Colored inversion transforms the seismic into relative acoustic or relative elastic impedance and the amplitudes of the output frequencies uh, of the output uh, then decrease with increasing frequencies. So if you look at the spectrum that is colored here in the bullet on the left, which is red, then we see decreasing amplitudes with increasing frequencies and we also rotate the phase 90 degrees, that is colored inversion. In spectral bluing, we are just boosting the uh, high frequencies, so we're reducing the impact of the low frequencies. And in doing that, we bring out the uh, information content that is uh, in the higher frequencies. So that is increasing our vertical resolution. And then in frequency shaping, we are changing both sides of the spectrum. And in combination with another plugin, post deghost, we can then create broadband seismic output. An example of seismic colored inversion. So this um, changes the uh, reflectivity into layer boundaries. It's relative acoustic or relative elastic impedance, um, but it uh, facilitates the interpretation. So on the left, we see a seismic section with a fluid uh, fill anomaly, hydrocarbons. And it's uh, very difficult to see actually where the hydrocarbons are, and also the contacts are not very visible, but if are after conversion to relative acoustic impedance, we clearly see the anomaly and the contact. And that is really why you are going to do seismic uh, inversion and colored inversion is then the simple easy way to, uh, to get to this, uh, this mode of interpretation. Spectral bluing, as I said, we are increasing the higher frequencies at the expense of the lower frequencies and that brings out uh, all kinds of details and we see for instance um, going from left to right the uh, increasing number of uh, seismic reflections and we see all kinds of details also if we compared seismic colored inversion and the spectral bluing on the right. And then frequency shaping, so changing the, uh, the frequency on both sides of the spectrum and also removing the, uh, the ghost effect by this application of the post decoast uh, plugin and that creates a uh, broadband type of seismic uh, images on the left before and on the right after. Coherent noise suppression. Um, on the right, or the example shown here, is a footprint uh, removal using Estimage's MGST striping. Um, footprints we, we see almost in all data sets. It's uh, lines uh, along the acquisition direction. Um, and these can be removed with this uh, plugin, um, which is uh, based on geostatistical uh, uh, algorithms. But then we also have other uh, types of filters for removing dipping noise event, events like our localized uh, velocity event filter and also Lundin's D-Smile model for removing uh, migration smiles. I'll show an example of that. And for multiple suppression we have the gap decon in the free version and we have Lundin's simple H-melt removal uh, trained machine learning model. So an example of D-Smile, um, this is a section that is riddled with uh, migration smiles as you can see and this is after application of this model 
The model is a three-dimensional unit and it's uh, blazingly fast in the application. So going from this volume to this is a matter of um, minutes. And here we see <coughs> another application of a, a trained model applied to the seismic. We have seismic with horizontal multiples. And this is after application of simple age melt. So before, after, before, after. Now then let's um, continue with a comparison of various filters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going continuously come back to this uh, input seismic section. I'm going to apply different types of filters so that you can see what the effect is of this particular filter. <coughs> First of all the dipsteered median filter. So that has removed random noise. It is uh, in principle edge preserving but of course not as good edge preserving as some of the specialized tools. And back to the input. Next one is the diffusion filter. This is one of the filters in our fault enhancement filter. And here we are just moving seismic data along the seismic reflections. So we're borrowing good seismic and moving it into the bad areas. It does increase the, uh, the edges, but also the seismic amplitudes um, are pretty distorted after this. This is back to the input. And here we have our fault enhancement filter which again is a composite of this diffusion filter and the dipsteered median filter. So now we have a better control over the seismic reflections, especially where it is, uh, the data is good. We see uh, normal seismic behavior and we have also enhanced the edges here and there. Back to the input and now we are going to the edge preserved smoother. So this is giving you really razor sharp uh, edges as you can see and compare it back to the input. This is an application of the recursive Gaussian filter, so it's not really edge preserving, but it is a very fast smoothing application. And back to the input. Then application of the machine learning simple denoise, so that is a simple noise removal. Uh, trained machine learning model. Back to the input and finally the application of AJAX which also removes random noise but it also changes the amplitude spectrum a little bit. And back to the input. Now finally wrap up. OpenDetect supports a large number of uh, free and commercial filters to enhance 2D and 3D seismic data. There's a little bit of pre-stack uh, filters available, but not uh, really much. It's really focused on post-processing of already available data. And we have filters for suppressing random noise, suppressing coherent noise, enhancing edges in the data, enhancing hydrocarbon anomalies, changing the frequency spectra. And if you uh, apply a machine learning model and consider that to be a filter, then interpolating of missing data, which is also one of the trained models in OpenDetect, could also be considered a filter in this respect. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much.